So your boy's been hearing a lot of people talking about Book Outlet and how good it is, how you can get some great deals. And so I kept hearing about it, hearing about it, hearing about it. And I'm like, you know what? I think I'm going to go ahead and give it a try. And of course, once I started looking at what they had to offer on Book Outlet and the prices that they had, I was like, damn, I'm about to get into this. So I'm going to talk about this massive Book Outlet book haul next. All right, so I went like really crazy here with this book outlet book haul. I don't even know how many books. I think I got like 20 or 25 books in this haul. And I'm telling you, I just went crazy. There were just so many good books like, you know, for like a dollar a piece. Um, and book outlet, if you want me to like endorse, you just hit me up and I'll, and I'll, uh, I'll give you that endorsement. But I got some really good books that I'm actually really excited about. Um, I'm not going to go deep into depth about, um, I'm not going to go into great depth about all of these cause it's just too many and I don't want the video to be like 45 minutes. So I'm just going to like touch on some of them real quickly and just kind of, you know, keep it moving real quick. So I've got this first batch of five books here that I'm going to show you. Um, the first one is it's called dreamland by Jennifer Latham. History isn't over yet. Um, some bodies won't stay buried. Some stories need to be told. When 17-year-old Rowan Chase finds a skeleton on her family's property, she has no idea that investigating the brutal century-old murder will lead to a summer of painful discoveries about the past, the present, and herself. So it just sounded like a great book, you know, with kind of some history going on there. And I thought, man, you know what? This, this sounds like something that I'm really interested in. So I thought, hey, it was really worth it. Uh, again, Dreamland Burning by Jennifer Latham. Next up is After Anna by Alexa Al... See, I want to assume that it's always a woman. Next up is After Anna by Alex Lake. Uh, USA Today bestseller. The real nightmare starts when her daughter is returned. And so uh, a girl is missing, five years old, taken from outside her school. She has vanished, traceless. The police are at a loss. Her parents are beyond grief. The daughter is lost forever, perhaps dead, perhaps enslaved. But the biggest mystery is yet to come. One week after she was abducted, Anna is returned. So just a, a great, uh, really an interesting sounding mystery about a child kidnapped and then mysteriously returns. And that's when the story actually really begins. Next up on the hall is I'm Traveling Alone by Samuel Bjork. And this is one that I thought was interesting. It's kind of a detective story. And I'm going to read a little bit of the back cover. From international best-selling author Samuel Bjork comes a chilling and fast-paced thriller in which two detectives are slyly pursued by the killer they seek to uncover. So, something like a good mystery right there. Maybe a little bit uh, slightly disturbing uh, cover photo, right? Or cover art there, I should say. Uh, with the uh, little girl's legs right there. Kind of dangling from uh, the top of the, of, the, uh, of the book right there. But... Uh, Really kind of um, interesting looking cover that uh, was kind of attention grabbing in its own right, but seemed like a really good story and I was willing to give it a try. Next up is The Dark Lake by Sarah Bailey. And this is another one that sounded really interesting to me. Um, just a little bit from the back cover here. Rosalind's secrets didn't die with her. The lead homicide investigator in a rural town, Detective Sergeant Gemma Woodstock is deeply unnerved when a high school classmate is found strangled, her body floating in a lake. And not just any classmate, but Rosalind Ryan, whose beauty and inscrutability exerted a magnetic pull on Smithson High School, first during Rosalind's student years, and then again when she returned to teach drama. So it just sounded like a good mystery that kind of uh, maybe covers different generations here. Uh, kind of nice looking uh, art right there with the water there, the dark lake. Um, just kind of a, you know, kind of a simple in some ways but effective in some ways as a cover so sounded intriguing it was a good buy and i was all in next up is tell me lies and you can see it's kind of an interesting uh, cover right there uh carola lovering hopefully i pronounced that correctly uh but tell me lies and then it's got uh, some lies crossed out and uh, tell me you love me tell me you need me tell me i'm yours tell me it's not over uh tell me you'll change uh, a novel tell me lies so uh, it just sounded like a really interesting 
um, story. I'll read this uh, right here from Kirkus Reviews. Passion, friendship, heartbreak, and forgiveness ring true in Lovering's debut, a fast-paced ride through hookups, breakups, and infidelities. There are unforgettable beauties in this very sexy story. So, a lot to sink your teeth into there. Sounded really good. Very intriguing cover art. And I thought, again, it was worth it for the price through Book Outlet. Next up is kind of a sports book that uh, I've kind of seen for many years and I've never actually got it. Uh, it's by Walter Dean Myers. It's called Game. And uh, it was uh, one, it's like one of those really short, uh, kind of speedy books that you could probably read in like one sitting while you're waiting for your plane at the at the airport. Uh, how deep is your game? Uh, Drew Lawson knows basketball is taking him places. It has to because his grades certainly aren't. But now his plans have run square into a pick. Will his game carry him to college or will Drew become another one of the great ballers in Harlem who never made it? So kind of a one of those crossroads stories where you have a, a athlete in this case and reaches the crossroads and will he take the right fork in the road or will he take the wrong one? You'll have to read it to find out. Okay, next group of five coming up right here. Next up right here is All Is Not Forgotten by Wendy Walker. Um, and then here's a actually a little uh, snippet here, a little review from Karen Slaughter, fine writer in her own right. Deeply intriguing and provocative. And uh, here's some more from William Landry, author of Defending Jacob, an assured, powerful novel that blends suspense and rich family drama. It is, in a word, unforgettable. So kind of a small town story um, with a local party and set in Connecticut. Um, so it's kind of an interesting story and I saw it uh, again it was a, a good price and I was like you know what it, it's a really intriguing cover art and I kind of like that and I thought you know what it's worth it to put in the uh, box there and it's a pretty damn big box and I'm looking forward to maybe checking this one out next up is The Cliff House by Amanda Jennings and uh, a couple of the reviews on the front haunting and evocative uh, a beautiful, stirring story of obsession. I mean, most people really like obsession stories. I think that's uh, almost, a, almost a given here. I want to read a little bit of the inside cover. Cornwall, summer of 1986. The Davenports, with their fast cars and glamorous clothes, living in the dream, living... Cornwall, summer of 1986. The Davenports, with their fast cars and glamorous clothes, living the dream in a breathtaking house overlooking the sea. If only, thinks 16-year-old Tasman, her binoculars trained on the perfect family in their perfect home. If only her life was as perfect as theirs. If only Eddie Davenport would be her friend. If only she lived at the Cliff House. So it's kind of an interesting story, uh, again, of a little bit of obsession and a little bit of maybe some voyeurism going on as well. So it sounded really interesting. Again, intriguing cover art and um, thought it was well worth it. A uh, little subtitle there, Bad Things Happen in Beautiful Places. Next up, I'm going to go a little bit of a, a couple books, not very many. I think there's two or three. I think there's three in here that are nonfiction books. And this is one of them, Beer Money by Francis Stroh, a memoir of privilege and loss. Uh, this is from uh, the family of the Stroh uh, Beer Brewing Company um, that were, they were in Detroit. And I remember that when I was a kid, they had the big, uh, big Stroh brewery plant there. And so I always wanted to check this book out and I saw it for a good price and kind of interested in uh, the story uh, behind the story. Uh, as someone who grew up in Detroit, this story seemed like it would be one that I would want to check out. So I decided to go ahead and pick it up. Beer Money, Francis Stroh, A Memoir of Privilege and Loss. Next up is Sarah Bladell, The Silent Woman. Over 3 million Louise Rick books sold worldwide. Bladell knows how to keep readers utterly transfixed. Tess Gerritsen. Since it was previously published as Call Me the Call Me Princess. Um, an online flirtation can have horrific consequences as Detective Louise Rick discovers when she is called to an idyllic Copenhagen neighborhood where a young woman has been left bound and gagged after a profoundly brutal rape attack. So 
you can kind of see where this is going, uh, where you have uh, dating websites, you have a, a sexual assault, a rape, and uh, a detective uh, on the scene right there. And there's actually a review here from Oprah.com, which is kind of interesting. Sarah Bladell's great skill in weaving a heartbreaking social history into an edge of your chair thriller, while at the same time creating a detective who's an emotionally rich and real as a close friend. Oprah.com. So sounded really interesting. So I was like, hey, I'm going to go ahead and last in this stack. I've got uh, looks like three more stacks to go uh, before I get done. So uh, batting down the hatches here for this one is Blended by Sharon M. Draper, New York Times bestselling author of Out of My Mind. And I thought this one would be kind of a cool one here. So I'll just read a little bit of it. Uh, there's a few quotes here, little teaser quotes. You're so exotic. You look so unusual. But what are you? really so you're kind of getting into some identity uh things that happen with people especially people of color especially people who are biracial and so i, I saw that and i thought you know this is going to be uh really interesting and also kind of the the emotional tug of war between parents um, that sometimes kids have to go through and so i thought it would be really interesting a uh, very cool cover art right there she's got the ice cream cone right there and then she's got it looks like a, a little chunk of uh, maybe vanilla ice cream, maybe a chunk of chocolate ice cream still there and blended together. So blended, huh? Get it? Actually, it was really cool though. I, I really like this very simplistic and yet powerful and deep cover art. First of the last three stacks of books here. Next up is Girl Unknown by Karen Perry. And uh, you can see a uh, young lady swimming right there or in the water. I shouldn't necessarily assume that she's swimming, but that's kind of how it looks here. I'm gonna read some of the reviews here on the back cover. Uh, an intense psychological thriller that explores emotional danger with relentless surgical accuracy. Tana French, New York Times bestselling author of The Trespasser and Into the Woods. Uh, another uh, review, compulsively readable with, a su with surprises until the very last page. A chilling tale about a family under threat from one of its own. Jessica Treadway, author of Lacey Eye and How Will I Know You. So, sounded really interesting and I was kind of glad to go ahead and pick it up. Um, it has a little bit about uh, life at a, at a university campus and um, so I thought uh, that's something that's always interesting to me uh, because I work at a university. So I thought, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and give this one a try. Next up, I'm gonna go back to nonfiction here and I'm gonna go to um, a player that I grew up watching, a basketball player that I grew up watching who uh, gave my beloved Detroit Pistons some work back in uh, 1984, and that is about Bernard King. It's called Game Face by Bernard King, a lifetime of hard-earned lessons on and off the basketball court. And this picture right here, I believe, is when uh, they were playing the Pistons in 1984 in the playoffs in Detroit, and uh, he had just a monster series in that game. And he uh, ended up with a devastating knee injury, and somehow he managed to come back from that. Nowadays, those kind of knee injuries aren't quite as big of a deal, but uh, back then it was a really big thing. And He came back from it and came back at a high level. He also had some personal demons that he dealt with, so I'm really kind of interested in reading this book. Again, got it for a good buy off a book outlet, so it was well worth the gamble. Last in this particular stack is Killing Kate by Alex Lake. There's a serial killer on the loose, and the victims all look like you. So kind of a little bit of a scary thing right there. A serial killer is stalking your home town. He has a type. All his victims look the same, and they all look like you. So kind of that mystery, that scary story that hits close to home that kind of gets you thinking a little bit of a psychological thriller. So I thought it was really a good deal and a very interesting story, a good cover art, kind of creepy cover art right there with the young lady right up here on the uh, bridge right there. And then the guy, the mysterious figure down there underneath, um, just kind of uh, seemingly stalking a victim. So I thought it was a really cool concept for a story and I was glad to pick it up. All right, eight more to go in this hall here. Next up is Perennials, a novel by Mandy Berman. And it sounded like a really interesting uh, book for me. And um, I'll read uh, one of the reviews from it. Snappy and irresistible, Mandy Berman's debut novel, Perennials, takes readers back to summer camp where her character's first friendships and treasons play low in a sharp dialogue and playful, generous prose. Berman fearlessly renders youth and adulthood alike in sentences you'll want to savor. So again, you got uh, camp life in the summer, 
I think for a lot of people that evokes like some really uh, some really cool memories, uh, probably mostly fond memories, but in some cases maybe not so fond memories. And a picture of a young lady in a inner tube, uh, kind of just enjoying life right there on a body of water. And so it sounded really good, and I was really willing to take a chance on it uh, because of some of the subject matters it touches on that are interesting to me. Next up is Lovesick by Jake Coburn. Love, secrets, and consequences. Ted's drunk driving accident has ruined his life. It cost him his basketball scholarship, ended his plans for college, and forced him into AA. But just when Ted has resigned himself to a new life, Michael reappears. The wealthy father of a bulimic Manhattan rich girl has a tempting proposition. He has agreed to pay for Ted's college tuition. Quite a generous offer, but there's one catch. Ted has to secretly keep tabs on his benefactor's daughter, Erica. A seemingly simple task with only one minor problem, Ted never expected to fall in love. So, interesting storyline. Uh, I'm kind of curious about how it's going to play out. Uh, you know, again, I like the theme of college life, college basketball, and then a little mystery with a little love story hopefully uh, woven in there. Uh, I thought it would be really interesting. Glad to pick this one up. Next up is Any Man by Amber Tamblin, and just the uh, review on the front by Janet Fitch, best-selling author of The Revolution of Marina M. and Paint It Black, and she writes, an explosive, shape-shifting piece of literary real estate. Tamblin takes every risk in this astonishing and innovative work and succeeds gloriously. Um, just one, one little bit here. A violent serial rapist who goes by the name Maud is on the loose. She hunts for men at bars and online. The place doesn't matter, neither does the man. Her victims then must grapple with the aftermath of their assault. Doubts from police, feelings of shame and alienation from their friends and family, and the haunting of a horrible woman who becomes the phantom on which society projects its greatest fears, fascinations, and even misogyny. So, wow, <laughs> that sounds like really interesting, uh, very different than what you would normally see. So this one I think is going to move up my list pretty quick. Next up is one that I've been wanting to read for a long time, and I finally got my hands on it at the right price, and that is All American Boys by Jason Reynolds and Brendan Keeley. Could be Kylie. Um, this is one I've just wanted to get for a long time because I just thought it was just a, a really, really cool story. Um, I'm going to read this review from Booklist, um, a starred review. This hard-edged, ripped-from-the-headlines book is more than a problem novel. It is a carefully plotted, psychologically acute, character-driven work of fiction that dramatizes an all-too-frequent occurrence. Police brutality and race relations in America are issues that demand debate and discussion, which this superb book powerfully enables. And you kind of get the gist of what the story is all about right there. Really excited to read this book. Um, it is a timely piece, especially some of the things that have been going on in the last three, four, or five years. I think this is going to be one that I'm going to really look forward to reading. And the last stack is right here. Um, this one is called The The Secret Game by Scott Ellsworth. And it's a, a wartime story of courage, change, and basketball's lost triumph. Um, it's about the secret game between uh, an all-black college team and uh, an all-white college team in 1943 when those kind of things just didn't happen. So I've seen a, a movie or a video about this game, and I'm also uh, excited to take a look at this book, The Secret Game. So should be a good one. Really, really excited to read this one. Again, this is from the non also from the nonfiction section, and you're kind of getting a feel for my, my uh, love for basketball right here. The Boys of Dunbar by Alejandro Daniels, uh, a story of love, hope and basketball and uh, this is one I'm really excited um, just a couple of um, little points about this one the 1981-82 Dunbar Poets were one of the greatest basketball teams of all time four players Muggsy Bogues Reggie Williams David Wingate and Reggie Lewis would eventually play in the NBA their success was due in large part to their coach Bob Wade who had made it to the NFL and like his players was a product of inner city Baltimore Wade understood both the opportunities and the obstacles and would not settle for anything but success. 
The Boys of Dunbar is an unforgettable story of dedication, inspiration, and teamwork. So really excited to read this one. Uh, I, re I recognize all these names uh, from the years and years and years of me watching basketball, studying basketball at pretty much all levels. So I'm really excited to read this book. Two more. Hang on with me. Next up, The Little Black Lies by Sandra Block. And a really intriguing cover art right there. Kind of a mysterious looking uh, look right there from the young lady in this. Um, a darkly intriguing mystery that pulls you in deep and doesn't let go. Meg Gardner, Edgar Award winning author. Um, she helps people conquer their demons, but she has a few of her own. In the halls of the psychiatric ward, Dr. Zoe Goldman is a, is a resident in training dedicated to helping troubled patients. However, she has plenty of baggage of her own. When her newest patient arrives, a beautiful sociopath who murdered her mother, Zoe becomes obsessed with questions about her own mother's death. But the truth remains tauntingly out of reach, locked away with her nightmares of an uncontrollable fire. And as her adoptive mother loses her memory to dementia, the time to find the answers is running out. As Zoe digs deeper, she realizes that the danger is not just in her dreams, but now is close at hand. And she has no choice but to face what terrifies her the most. Because of that, because what she can't remember just might kill her. Little Black Lies is about madness and memory and the dangers of the little lies we tell ourselves just to survive. So, sounded really good. Um, dealing with kind of psychiatric hospital life and situations and mental health. So I thought that was uh, really interesting and I was really looking forward to reading this one once I discovered it on Book Outlet. And last, but certainly not least on the list, The Separatists, a newsmaker's novel by Liz Wheel with Sebastian Stewart, New York Times bestselling author. Um, so this sounds really cool. Journalist and newscaster Erica Sparks is only planning to report on an explosive story until she gets caught in the middle of it. After getting the green light from her network to launch an investigative news show, Erica flies to Bismarck, North Dakota to investigate Take Back Our Homeland, the nation's largest secessionist group. What she finds is profoundly disturbing, a growing threat to the future of our union. Back home, her husband Greg is drinking more and talking less and taking an unusual interest in the glamorous author Leslie Burke Wilson. Erica's teenage daughter has also become began acting out in troubling ways. Then Erica discovers a potential informant murdered in her Bismarck Hotel. Take Back Our Homeland might be even more dangerous than she had thought, and she's unwittingly become one of the key players in the story. Her fear and anxiety escalate for her marriage, her daughter, and her own life. So, it sounded really good. Um, again, journalism is kind of one of my things, and so kind of excited about it from that standpoint and uh, kind of got the separatist group too it just seems really interesting so just thought i would go ahead and grab that again really intriguing cover art right there so uh again one that i was really looking forward to picking up and i did glad i grabbed it so that's it with the big book haul um just a, a really great haul my first time trying a book outlet and things went really smooth uh they took care of me um, I was able to get my books really, really fast. Um, the checkout and the pay was uh, really easy to take care of. And so uh, just a, a great haul. I just could not be more excited about the books that I was able to get. And for the prices that I got them to, it was just uh, impossible to beat. So really excited about that and looking forward to making my next order on Book Outlet. But not until I knock out some of these books right here. I've got a 50 book challenge on Goodreads and I'm about 10 books in. Here coming toward the end of the month of February, I'll probably get at least one more book read before the end of February, and uh, then we'll see. So I'll be uh, well on track. It says I'm 10 books ahead of schedule, which is good for me, and I'm looking forward to uh, really smashing that Goodreads uh, goal of 50, and uh, this book haul, I think, is going to play a big role in me smashing that Goodreads goal. So if you would smash that like button and also hit the subscribe button if you would if you're interested in more content from booktube and authortube uh, i'm going to have a lot more videos coming up and i'm really excited about really re 
be invigorating that passion for reading and so gonna have some good uh, book reviews coming up here in the not too distant future and excited to share some of my thoughts with you and I hope you will share some of your thoughts with me on some of these books have you read any of these books that I had in this hall if so let me know what you think about them and uh, I'd love to get some conversation going as I start to bite into some of these books and uh, keep this uh, reading goal going and Hopefully, again, smash that 50 book record uh, for Goodreads. It would be a personal record for me. Uh, probably not for other people, but it would be for me. And so really excited about that. So that's it for now. Uh, join me for future videos on this channel. Boom. Peace.